Welcome back guys, hope you are doing great. This is the day 8 of our project series, full stack uh, Spotify clone 2.0 by using Next.js, Stripe payment gateway integration and Superbase. Right, so far from day 1 to day 7, we successfully uh, loaded up our artist details and song details and including the payment functionalities, including the searching options, including the favorites options, we have successfully done so far. And in this day eight of this project series, we are going to integrate the Stripe membership in our project over here, right? So if you haven't watched any of the day one from two day seven, so don't worry and drop the link in the description below. So please go ahead and watch it. And I'll strongly recommend to watch it from day one to day seven without missing any video, right? So without wasting your time, let's jump into the today project series and let's start integrating the Stripe payment gateway integrations with our project. All right then, so before jumping into the payment gateway integrations, what I need to do is I need to bring the loading and the is there any error is happening, I need to display the error as well. So let's handle those and then let's start moving into that. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So let me close everything over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, get back into the app folder and site because that is our root. And inside here, I'm going to create a new file called error.tsx. All right. So this is the file which is going to load that error.tsx file over here, right? All right. So it, it's showing that it's failed to compile the error.tsx because it doesn't have anything in it. So don't worry. So this error will be fixed up. Okay. So now inside here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a component. So let's say SFC and let's make it as error. And inside here, I'm going to create a uh, use the box component, which we have created from our component dot slash box. And inside this box, what I'm going to do, I'm going to supply a paragraph and I'm just going to say something went wrong, right? And this box is going to have some styles. So which is going to have width, of course, it's going to be full and height is also going to be full and flex item center and justify it, everything in the center. And for this class name, I'm just going to have text neutral 400. Say the changes. All right. Now the issue will be rectified over here. So if I refresh this changes. OK, so we are getting an error. And of course, this is supposed to be a client use client component right so now the issue should be rectified so you can see the issue is resolved so now what happened is in case if there is any error is happening for instance if i get back into the layout.tsx over here and uh, for instance over here right let me throw a new error throw new error and let's say that's the error is the test okay so Okay, so we are getting that error over. Okay, so let me throw it here then throw new error. Test. All right, so we are getting an error from where? So that's error.tsx, it's not working properly. Why? Okay, my bad. So what I did is I just kept the error.tsx over here, but I tried to throw a new error in the layer.tsx. So I need to throw the error in the page.tsx. So for instance, over here, now what I need to do is uh, right after here, I'm just going to say throw new error test. Now that should give that message. The custom error component will be loaded over here, right? So that's the reason we are having this uh, error.tsx. Just like the same way, what I need to do is I have to bring the loading as well as. So what I'm going to do inside this new site file, I'm just going to create a new file called loading.tsx. All right, L-O-A-D-I-N-G, loading.tsx. Of course, that's the same error will happen over here, but because we don't have anything inside the loading.tsx. So what I need to do is I just need to bring use client and here let's say sfc and let's bring this loading and inside here we are going to create a div right 
So now what we have to do is to we have to make sure that we already install the react spinner so yep we did already added the react spinner over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use that react spinner inside over here so i'm going to use the puff loader so puff loader which is coming from react spinners and let me make sure this should be loaded um inside that complete or it should um what i'm trying to say here is either we should load inside that container or if we should uh, overlap the entire uh, page so it's better to load entirely so what i'm going to do is fix it and i'm going to say inset zero and it should be always top of the layer and whatever it's loading the background it should be blur backdrop blur medium and flux item center and justified center and bg it's going to be black 50 50 percentage and let me keep this as background blur itself not medium or anything all right so let me bring it completely we'll wrap okay so and this for the puff loader i'm going to make the size as 40 and i'm going to change the color code which is going to be 10B981. So sales changes. So now if I refresh it, you should see that that little bit loading animation over there, right? So that looks good. So if you don't want to keep this as a complete fixed position, so what you can do is we can make this as width full and height full, just like that. So now if you are refreshing it, you should get that loading animation just over there alone, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it just like this alone itself. And I don't need this background color. Save this and let me refresh it. So that's how it looks like over there. Because right now instantly the data it's been loading. So that's the reason it's, it's showing like that. But if I click the search option, you can see yeah we are getting the data instantly so that's the reason you're not getting that search or loading animations over there but when you once you deploy it in the live server so you might be possible there if the network is slow the loading animation will be a little bit delay over there right so you can see and now what i have to do is i have to copy this and i have to paste it inside the artist favorites search everywhere so now if i get into the search and if I refresh this, you can see we are getting that. We can get in the loading animations. We can get in the loading animations, right? So that's looking so cool, right? So we successfully finished the error and uh, the loading animation. So now all we have to do is to jump into the Stripe payment gateway integration. So all I'm going to do is to close all these things. All right. So uh, let me make sure whether I install the necessary package for working with Stripe or not. So I don't have that packages here so now what i have to do is to i have to install the necessary package to work with this stripe right so in order to do that i'm going to create uh, install that stripe packages over here so let's go ahead and install that let me shut it down and let me clear it okay so here npm install stripe first i need to install the stripe S-T-R-I-P-E, make sure that it's spelled properly. And I need to install at stripe slash stripe hyphen JS, P-E, at stripe, stripe hyphen JS. So hit the enter on so let's download these two packages. All right. All right, now it's successfully installed. So let me rerun the server, npm run dev, right. Once you restarted your server, so you have to refresh your application. So let's refresh it and let me get back over here. Now, what I need to do is to, I'm going to create a new file over here. Okay, new folder called library and we are going to bring all the necessary files. Before in, moving into that, let's get back to our environment folder over here. So right after your admin ID, so you can uh, get you can open my gist folder over in the link in the description below and there you can find the necessary environment variable which i created so copy that and paste it over here 
so next public stripe publishable key stripe secret key and stripe webhook secret so now let's get back to the stripe so let me open this stripe and create yourself a developer account over there so sign in and yep i'm gonna sign in It's loading. Yeah. Alright, so now it's successfully logged in with my account over here. So in this case, what you have to do is to you have to create yourself a store over here. And over here you can see I do have a different stores over here. If you wish to create a new, what I have to do is to create a new account. And you have to type your name over here. So in this case, I'm just going to say YouTube Spotify, Spotify clone. And I'm just going to keep it the country of origin as India itself. So I'm going to create an account. So that might take some time. So don't worry. So we are using the testing environment only. Once you want to make it to production, so we have to change this to complete API to production API. And that will give you the secret key and we have to update it back over here okay right now we can see we are in the test mode so okay so uh, we are in the developers so click this developers and that will provide your api keys and everything so get back to the api keys all right so this is my publishable key so if i click this that will be copied and i have to paste it over here right then i have to get my stripe secret key so reveal this test key and i have to click this and i have to paste it over here so don't worry about the Stripe webhook. I will show you how to get the webhooks later. So save this changes. Whenever you change your environment variable, just stop it and restart your server and refresh it. Right. So now what I have to do is to I have to get back to my um, project folder and over here I'm going to create a new folder in this root directory called lib library. And inside the lib folders or let's rename this libs libraries yes libraries folder inside here i'm going to create a new file called stripe.ts so whatever the code i'm going to type here you can simply copy that helper codes directly from here because you don't want to make any unwanted mistakes so i copied all the necessary files stripe helpers stripe.ts and stripe client and the superbase admin for which is necessary for that stripe you can simply copy and paste it and you can work along with me anyway i'm going to type it over here i'm going to explain the codes line by line so here first let me import the stripe import stripe from the stripe then i'm going to export let's say export const export const stripe equals to new stripe open it so from the process that means the environment variable process dot env dot i need to get the stripe environment key uh, which is going to be our stripe secret key so let me access that stripe secret key if the stripe secret key is not there use it as an empty string along with this i'm going to pass a several object for that so api version which is going to be the current date so 2024 uh, okay this is the one 2023 the, the which is giving you the suggestions for that okay i'm going to use that suggestions then i'm going to use the app info which is going to be an object inside the app info i'm going to supply the name of our app which is going to be the spotify youtube clone 2.0 youtube clone v2 which is version number two all right then i'm going to supply the version and which is going to be 0.1.0 something like this right this is the stripe.ts file and you can see which is exactly the same which i have created over here right you can simply copy and paste it over here then i'm going to create a one more file which is going to be the stripe client stripe client.ts stripe client c caps stripe client dot ts and inside the stripe client.ds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the stripe method and i need to load the stripe right 
So by using this publishable key, this is the publishable key. By using that publishable key, I'm going to load these stripes. So what I'm going to do is import from at stripe, stripe JS. I'm going to get two different instances. One is going to be load stripe and another one is going to be the stripe, right? Then let stripe promise, which is going to be a promise. Oops, which is going to be a promise. Yes, promise with the type of stripe. If it is not there, then I'm going to some because there is a possibility of null also. So I'm going to give it or null. Either you should use the type of stripe or you should use the null. Right. Then I'm going to say export const get stripe, which is going to be open it if not stripe if not stripe promise if that is no stripe promise what i'm going to do is stripe promise which is equals to load the stripe and i'm going to get that stripe publishable key from the environment variable dot i'll get that publishable key from here then i'm going to supply it over here and if it is undefined in that case we need to use it use an empty string over there right and then at the end, all I have to do is to return the stripe. So in this case, right after this if condition, I'm going to return the stripe promise. Say this changes. So whenever I'm get, calling this get stripe to create the instance for our stripe, so that is going to return a promise, which is going to be either the stripe or which is going to be an out. Right. So say this changes. Then I have to create the helpers. Helpers dot ts. Right. So inside this helpers, so I'm going to get the URL for the Stripe book URL. We need to get the URLs over here. So I'm going to import the price types from our custom types, which we have created already inside our types.ds. So I, I hope I already shared that code and you guys already copied it and you can get that price from there. So that's the types that we are going to use it inside. And here I'm just going to say export const get url which is going to be a callback function right and here let url which is equal to so if there is a site url so if there is in the environment variable if there is a site url or if there is a versal url so i'm just going to use that maybe in the future if there is not i'm going to use the local host url over here right so let's see Okay, so what I'm going to do is here, I'm just going to say process dot env dot in case in my project in the verse in the project if I have this URL or process dot env dot if I have public versal URL the place where I'm going to deploy it. If not, you have to use this local host if none of the variables are available you guys it's need to use that thing of course we don't have this public url or virtual url in our local environment so it's going to use that later anyways we need to update it right so here this is fine now it doesn't matter whatever the url object i'm gonna get i need to extract that so current url is going to be url if that url dot includes open http in that case if that is using that function then what i need to do i need to use the url or else what i need to do is i need to wrap it http s colon double slash dollar url whatever the url if it has the http in it then use it if it doesn't have it use this that's what we are going to do now right and then after this I have to get the URL, which is going to be URL, and I'm going to use the character at function, and I'm going to find the URL dot length minus one, which means the last index, right? So, is that, and if it is equals to empty, then I'm just going to keep it as URL itself, or else I have to manually add that. So, dollar URL slash, 
so we are make sure that the last at the end here we are having this slash or not if at the last index if we are having the slash ignore it and just keep the url alone because we already have it if we don't have we need to add that slash at the end and at the end i'm just going to return the url so this is just the double verifications every time whenever you're calling this stripe we need to make sure that url is properly uh, maintained or not so that's the reason we are having a separate function to get url and to configure it separately then now what i have to do is to we have to <clears throat> write a post data so let's say over here so export const export const um post data which is going to be async function right this is going to be asynchronous function and inside here i'm going to get an object which is going to be the type uh, of the url which is going to be the string type then i'm going to use the data when it which is going to be which is an optional and which is the price and which is going to be the type of price all right inside this url inside that i'm going to get the url and the data object so basically what you are, what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to send a uh, two uh property in, in it which is going to be the url and the data and we are setting the type of the url and the data over here so url of course it's going to be a string and we are receiving the data as an object which is going to have a property called price and that price which is going to be the type of price type so that's what we have did over there and here i'm just going to say console.log post underscore request post underscore request and i'm going to print the url and the data which i have received in that right just like that this is how it looks so now i'm going to get the response response which is going to be the type of response make sure that it doesn't make any spelling mistakes or it's better you guys please copy it from here right so uh, click the link and go ahead and copy and paste it to avoid the mistakes so await fetch await fetch pass the url in it and i'm going to fetch that data from that uh, by using that stripe url then i'm just going to give the method as post comma and headers of course i need to use the headers headers is going to be new header which is coming from our uh, headers yes this is the one new headers open it and inside here i need to say the content type the content type of course it's going to be the json type so content type is going to be the application slash json then right after that i need to supply the credentials so the credentials is going to be the same hyphen origin okay credentials is going to be the same origin then you need to supply the body so body which is going to be using the json dot stringify supply the data in it right and right after this what i'm going to do is if not that response dot okay that response is not okay then i'm just going to say console console dot log error in post then i'm just going to get that as an object url whatever the data and whatever the response is i'm going to get it as an object so let's make this as a capital right and here i'm just going to say throw new error which is going to be the response dot status text whatever the response status text that we are receiving and i'm going to write that as the error code and at the end if there is no error i'm just going to say return the response dot json right that's the method all right and at the and i need to convert the time so export const to date time because whenever the new a subscription has been added right so we need to get that current timestamp so for to to return the timestamps so i'm just going to create a function over here a custom function okay so export const to date time and this is going to get the seconds and which is going to be a number type in it and inside here variable t which is going to be for time new date new date open it and i'm going to use this 1970 
hyphen zero one so if 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 you so this is the time date i'm going to use this this is the one so i'm going to copy this paste it and if i copy this and if i open the chat gpt all right and over there why it's taking so long to load okay so if i copy this and if i say explain this so that is going to explain that particular so that's the see here that's the javascript code creates a new date object representing a specific date and time so here this date this is the part represents the date and the, it, it explains that this is the basic format right this, this is the basic date format that we are fixing on what kind of uh, format that i need in that specific date should be so i'm going to get that and then i'm going to supply t dot set seconds set seconds from the date onwards i'm going to set our custom seconds in that in that specific date and i'm going to return the t which is going to return our current system uh, not the current system date and time uh, whatever the seconds which i'm passing into that function that function will get that seconds use this date format and it will set that current system seconds and it will return that current system seconds in that specific date format right that's the usage of this specific function right save this and so far the helpers.txt is completely finished right so next what we have to do is to we have to use this inside everything inside our uh, super base super base admin.js so over here i'm just going to create super base admin.ts right so uh now what i have to do is to all i have to do is to import the stripe i need to get the stripe then i need to import one more package which is going to be at super base and at super base js so let me stop this and let me clear it and here i'm just going to say npm install at super base slash at super base js that's the thing which we are going to add so hit enter so now npm run dev close this okay and i'm going to refresh this one more time because that's we added and right after here i'm just going to say import create client from where create client from at superbase and superbase js and i need to get import database from our at types.db and let's import the price from at types so that database and the price are different which is coming from two different files so make sure that they imported properly and i need to get the stripe object from where from dot slash stripe then i need to get import to date time from dot slash helpers so export const const super base admin which is equals to create client that's the create client which is specific type of our database and open it now we have all the instances of our databases which is going to be the super base admin so super base admin have all the control over our database right then i just need to supply the environment variable so process dot environment variables dot next public uh where it is next public super base url paste it if that is not there then empty and i need to supply the service role key as well as so process dot env dot i need to get the service role key so get the super base service role key from there and paste it over here right if it is not there then return it as an empty string so you need to supply the super base url and you need to supply the super base service role key which we already have in our environment variable so now we have to create five different functions to in order to update our product record price record and create or retrieve the customer details and billing the and customer billing details and maintaining the subscription status so we have to create all those things right so I think I'm ran into some issues. Okay, so let me stop the server for the time being. Okay, so here I'm just going to create a function. So first we are going to create a function to upsert the product record, product record. Then 
we need to create upshirt the price record upshirt the price record then we have to create a function to create or retrieve the customer details customer details then uh, we have to create a function to copy billing details to the customer then you have to write a function to manage the subscription status right these are the things that we have to create and at last all we have to do export all these functions so all these functions which i already copied and pasted in the gist folder which i just file which i given in the description below so please go ahead and copy the code and paste it one after another you can see we have all the customer retriever details and absurd price record everything over there all right so let's go ahead and create one after another so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new function over here which is going to be const upset record which is going to be asynchronous function and this function which is going to take a product so product and the product which is going to be stripe dot product that's the type of that specific parameter then inside here const product data product data okay which is going to be the type of the product and equals to all right so here now i need to create id id which is going to be product dot id then i need to create the active which is going to be product dot active then i need to create the name which is going to be the product dot name so don't make any spelling mistakes over here if you are typing along with me or better copy and paste it over there so product description product dot description description if the description is not there use the undefined then image which is going to be product dot image it's question mark dot zeroth index from if that is not there use the now then metadata which is going to be the product dot metadata product dot metadata right so save this changes and everything now all i have to do const and here equals to await super base admin dot from opponent i need to get the products table from the products right that's the admin and i'm going to get the error object over here in case while doing if i get any error if the product i'm just going to say upsert open it so this function is going to upsert our product data okay cool so now what i have to do is while doing this if there is any error if there is any error now all i have to do is to throw that error outside that's it throw that error if not all i have to say console.log open it and i'm just going to say product inserted updated something colon and i'm going to return the product id over here comma product dot id okay that's the reason we use the absurd method either if the product is already there it will be updated or it will be inserted right so that's the duty of this function now we successfully finished the absurd product record and if you check it out over here so which is exactly the same thing which we did over here right not that one this one absurd product record then what i have to do i have to create the absurd price record so let me go ahead and create that so const absurd price record which is going to be receive the type as which is going to be an asynchronous function and this function is going to receive the parameter as the price and the price which is going to be the stripe dot price right so enter now all i have to say const price data which is going to be the type of price open it id which is going to be price dot id then product id which is going to be price sorry which is going to be the type of type of price dot product which is if it is equals to string then i just need to return the price dot product 
or else I need to return an empty string. So uh, before returning the product ID, I'm just going to check the product type if it is string, then return the product or else return the empty string, right? At last, then what I have to do active. So active, which is going to be the price dot active, then currency. So currency, which is going to be price dot currency, then description, which is going to be price dot nickname. If that is not there, then use the undefined. All right. So the type, which is going to be price dot type what type of the price it is and unit amount which is going to be price dot unit amount if it is not there return undefined then interval so price dot recurring dot interval right then interval count which is going to be price dot recurring dot interval count right then uh, we have to get the trial periods days colon price dot make sure the trial spelling is properly t r i a l so because i made a blender mistake over here because i just changed these two letters and it took me nearly one or two hours to figure out what mistake why the price is not in the updating it took me that i'm, I'm constantly getting this error and uh, but it took me a long time to figure out that's the issue right so please go ahead and um, type it properly or better copy it from here so trial period days right so and at last and we need to get the metadata as well so which is going to be the price dot metadata so save these changes right so after here we have to do exactly the same stuff what we did over here so i'm just going to copy it from here and i'm going to write after here and i'm going to paste it but this time we are going to update the prices table not the products table so which is going to be the prices table and which is going to be the price data and here i'm just going to say price dot id okay price inserted slash updated and i'm going to return the price dot id so now we finish those two things next let's we have to create create or retrieve the customer details that's the function that we are going to to create now so all we have to do is to over here const create or retrieve customer details which is going to be an async function asynchronous function and inside here i'm going to get an object right so we are going to create an object so these object which is going to be the type of this following right so i'm going to use the email which is going to be the string then i'm going to use the uid email use ID, uid which is going to be the type of string so the pair of the properties which, which we are sending inside is the email and the uuid that's the two things that we are sending in it now inside this function what i need to do is first i need to get the customer details by using that so const i'm going to get the data or the error so await super base admin from the super using the super base admin from the customers from the customers table i'm gonna get select so i'm gonna select that uh, stripe customer id so from the customer table i have this specific column so i need to fetch that column if it is equals to open it the id field should be equals to our uuid field if it is say so fetch that single record from there save these changes this is the complete code all right so let me bring the word up right now right after here if there is error or if i don't have the data right not make sure that you added the not sim sign over here if i don't have the data stripe dot customer id then const customer data customer data which is going to be the type of meta data all right so metadata so from the metadata what we are going to do we are going to get inside the metadata we have one more object which is going to be the super base uuid super base uuid which is the type of string okay along with this i'm going to get the email and the email which is going to be what it is 
here and the email which is going to be the string right like this or better okay like this and which is going to be equal sign and open it and i'm going to get the metadata and from that metadata i'm going to get the superbase oops superbase uuid which is going to be our customized uid say these changes this is how it should looks all right so either type it properly or better copy and paste it right all right so then now what i have to do is to uh right after here this is the place this is the place our if condition is being finished so right after here i'm gonna get that email so if i do have the email then i need to get the customer email so customer from the customer data dot email which is equals to our email <laughs> okay save it then right after here now what i have to do is cons customer customer is equals to await stripe stripe dot customers stripe dot customers create using the create method we are going to create our new customer by ourselves customer which is going to be the our customer data right then const error which is going to be the super base error equals to await super base admin dot from customers i'm going to insert that newly create customer insert and i'm going to supply an array and inside that array i'm going to supply the object id which is going to be the uuid then stripe um underscore which is this one stripe underscore customer id stripe underscore customer id is going to be our customer dot id right that's the thing that we need to insert here so please make sure whenever you are inserting this it should be proper okay so it's better copy it from here right so then right after here while doing this if there is any error so if super base error i'm gonna say throw super base error if then if not console.log new customer created colon and i'm going to supply that uuid over here and at last return customer dot id from the customer created id i'm going to create this in that okay if okay if they already have if the customer already have if customer already on a plan that's for a new customer if the customer is already on a plan return data dot stripe customer id that's it that's how this function it should be all right so either type it completely without any spelling mistakes or anything else or what you have to do it it's better to copy it completely from there from where from here you should better copy it completely from here and all you have to do is to replace this entire function right so that's what we have to do either copy it from there or just replace it okay so now we have all our complete functions which we have created okay so next what i have to do is to i have to create the billing details over here so i'm going to create that function as well as so copy the billing so over here const billing customer which is equals to async and which is async and a callback function and this is also going to take an object and which is going to be a specific type mm, no this is not going to be a specific type which is going to take two different parameters uuid which is going to be string then payment method which is going to be the stripe dot stripe dot payment method all right save this changes and inside this function now first i have to get the customer details so const customer which is going to be from the payment method itself i can get the customer as what as string then const equals to from the payment method 
I can get the billing details. So I need the name, name, phone, and the address. These are the objects which I needed from the payment details. Then if not name or not phone or not address, address, all I have to do is to simply return. Okay, if I do have, I need to fetch a white stripe stripe dot customers from the customers i need to say update our customer with these specific objects name comma phone comma address right save these changes for the address you will get the type error this is just a type error you can see type address is not assignable to the empty able address param is undefined right so this is just a type error. So to ignore this, what you can simply do over here is at ts hyphen ignore. So that will ignore that specific type error. Okay, that's not an issue. That's just a type error. So after here, now what I have to do is to const get the error object from where await super base admin from the users table okay i'm gonna say update open it open the object and inside here we are going to update the billing address field which is going to be our address spread out the objects and i'm going to update the payment method and this payment method is going to be spread out all the payment method and inside here i'm gonna have the array inside that array i do have the payment method dot type that's the type right right so now we are updated and which should update the equal so id should be id parameter should be equals to this uuid right while doing this if there is any error oops say this changes and while doing this if there is any error i just need to throw that error throw that error say the changes so that is going to be your billing customer details functions. So once again, if, if you figured it out, is there any mistakes over here? So please better copy the code from here and paste it over here, right? Now, right after here, now I'm going to copy this manage subscription status. So over here, so const manage subscription status change. Okay, that's the function. So which is going to be an asynchronous, just like the same way what we did. That's it's going to be an asynchronous function. Async, open it. Okay, so this asynchronous function, which is going to get three different parameters, which is going to be the subscription ID, customer ID, and create actions. So that is going to receive. So I'm going to copy this thing from here. Copy. And I'm going to paste it over here subscription ID customer ID and everything all right so then right after here what we are doing over here is we are just getting the customer details from with that specific customer ID from our supervised admin object then if there is no customer then what I'm going to do I'm just going to say throw no customer we don't have any customer over there that's the error okay that's a customer error then if you have the customer I need to get the ID from there that's what we are getting over here. So if the customer, its ID is there, then of course we need to get the customer subscription details. So that's what we are doing over here, right? And we need to generate the customer subscription data. So that is this over here. So let me go ahead and type that. So this is the most important thing in this. So you guys, you better copy it and paste it. And But here, let me type it over here, right? So const, okay, so let me use this subscription data name subs oops subscription data which is going to be from the database database i'm going to say public and i'm going to say tables and i'm going to say i'm going to access the subscription table okay then i'm going to perform the insert operation which is going to be equals to open as an object right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ID, which is going to be the subscription dot ID. Then I need to say user ID, which is going to be the UUID. Then the metadata, which is going to be 
subscription dot metadata right all right then right after here i'm just going to the say the status which is going to be the subscription dot status all right so we will get some type issues over here so i just going to say at ts ignore let's say at ts hyphen ignore that's the thing that's what we are going to do so that will ignore that status issue then price id which is going to be subscription oops subscription dot items dot data which is going to be an array in that first index we are going to get that price and we are going to id because this is a membership role of course we are going to get only one mem active membership that's the reason we are getting the zeroth index directly over here so price dot id then right after here so what we need to do now we need to get the quantity so quantity quantity which is going to be the subscription dot subscription dot quantity we need to get the subscription quantity so of course this is going to throw an error so i'm just going to copy and paste it over here and i'm going to ignore that error for the time being all right now right after here i need to get the cancel at period cancel at period end cancel period end so it's going to be the subscription dot cancel period end then i need to say cancel at this is going to be subscription dot cancel at then okay so the cancel at if there is a cancel at so this is the thing which is most important one uh, if there is a cancel at that is going to be a timestamp so i'm going to get that timestamp and i'm going to pass that to two date time which i created i'm going to pass that subscription dot cancel at dot two iso string right if not i'm just going to return the object as null so over here if I have the cancel at period, then I'm going to get that cancel at and I'm going to pass it to our two time and I'm going to convert it to the ISO time string. Otherwise, I'm going to return it as null. So now we have that cancel at. So then we do have the cancelled at also, which is going to be exactly the same stuff what we did for the cancel at. So if I have the subscription cancelled at cancelled at object then i'm going to pass it to two date time subscription dot cancelled at cancelled at dot two iso string if not return it as now save these changes now uh next what i have to do is to i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it this time instead of cancelled at what i'm going to do i'm going to say current period end current period end okay so now we are getting an error mm, that is i think because of this so let's ignore this we should directly change this to current period end okay so that's the thing current period end then copy this and paste it one more time this time current period end which is going to be um current period start current period start then right after here this is going to be created created and one more time which is going to be uh, ended at okay for the ended at we have to check the condition so which is going to be ended at ended at 
so for the ended at what i need to do is i need to check the condition so ended at if the subscription because that is the possibility this ended at period will going to be null so that's the thing so if there is a subscription dot ended at then you have to get it otherwise you have to return it as null right something like this and at the end now what i have to do is to trial period starts let's have to do the same thing copy it and paste it two more times this time this ended at is going to be trial start and trial end save this changes right so these are the custom objects which we have to create with our subscriptions so basically we do have extra objects also over here trial start and trial end maybe in the future if you want to play around with the trial periods also you can do that okay so if you don't want any unwanted mistakes so it's better to copy this object alone completely and you can simply just replace this over here which is exactly the quite same all right then what i have to do is to i have to push this to our super base admin to our subscriptions details so right after here you have to do that this is how we need to do it then if there is any error then what we have to do is we have to throw that error or we just have to print it while doing this if there is any issue throw that error or we just simply print the console log detail then all we have to do is to uh, we have the create actions right so based on the create actions we have to perform so based on the create actions and the subscription payment mode we have the uid all these details are there i need to call the copy billing details function so that will update the user id with the subscription payment method over there right so save this details and at the end i have to export all the functions which i have successfully created over here so now we finished all the necessary functions which is coming from your superbase admin so it's better to make it any mistake so better always you guys copy the details completely from there and then paste it over here right all right so now we have the complete superbase admin so far we finished all the necessary things so let's go ahead and start doing the necessary actions from the client side which we need to do so let me go ahead and start run dev and let me make sure if there is no mistakes out there okay server is ready let me open the local host yep it's loading so far i don't think so there is no mistakes so we don't get any mistakes at all so far there is no issues at all which means everything is perfectly fine so let's go ahead and start creating our client side with our stripe actions all right then so now since there is so far no mistakes in our superbase admins and you over here now what i have to do is to right so we have to um create a web hook right so over here you can see that our web hook is completely empty so right uh, let's let's go ahead and generate our web hooks in order to do that i'm going to create a new folder over here inside the app called api and inside the api folder i'm going to create a new file called um web hooks so create a new file new folder new folder web hooks make sure they spell perfectly w e b h o o k s and inside this web hooks i'm going to create a new file called route.ts enter so inside the web hook let's go ahead and import the necessary packages so we can copy the same stuff from here uh, over here i already copied it uh, if you scroll down yeah here it is web for grout.ts so you can copy it directly from here so i'm going to copy this import stripe so these are the import packages that we need to import it okay then we need to get the stripe from where from our library from our at libs slash stripes so right then i have to get all these packages from our superbase admin which i already exported the functions upset right upset prior proud product record i think i made a mistake in the superbase admin where it is over here yep i made a mistake over here right anyways i'm gonna keep it in the same way over there okay then I'm going to get this object const relevant events. These are the relevant events that we are trying to set over here. 
right? So they better copy and paste these relevant events. These are the events, nothing but which is generated by your. If you go here and you can see these are the events which is uh, given by your uh, Stripe webhook, right? So that's these are the event names which is generated from there, right? Then right after that, what I have to do is to I have to create a post method, right? So let's go ahead and create that post method. So over here, so export const post, which is going to be an asynchronous function. So I'm going to say async and that function is going to be the request, which is going to take the request. Okay. Then inside this function, so const body, which is equals to const body equals to await request dot body let's get that sorry request dot text not body then i need to say const signature which is going to be from the headers from the headers i'm gonna get the stripe signature stripe signature which is looks like this stripe signature okay stripe signature then const webhook secret i'm going to create one more variable const which is going to be the web hook secret which is going to come from our process dot env dot stripe webhook secret which we have in our local url right this is the one which we are creating right now all right let me paste it over here. Then right after here, what I need to do is I need to create these stripe events. So let event. So I need to figure out what kind of event it's being triggered. So if the let event equals stripe dot event, and I'm going to use the try. Okay. And here I'm just going to say if not signature and the webhook secret, I need to return or I need to get the event. And if the stripe webhooks dot construct event, okay, we are going to construct the event by using the data, by using the signature, and by using our webhook secret. So you can get all these things from where over here. So if you go here and if you click and add endpoint and you can check, you can play around over here, received events and sample endpoint on this one. Let's go here, this, uh, over here, see how to create the events, how to get the signatures and everything, right? So that's the thing which we are trying to do over here. Okay, so now right after that, Okay, right after the try and catch. So this is the place, try and catch, it's been completed. Okay, so right after here, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna create an if condition. If, if the relevant, uh, okay, so if the relevant event has, if the relevant event dot has, the event dot type in that case i need to open it then i need to open the try and catch and inside the try and catch i'm going to use the switch case switch and open it and i'm going to supply the event dot type in it open it okay so let's go to the catch statement and if there is any error i'm just going to say console dot error log dot error and i'm going to return new next response new next response that that is an web hook error error okay and the status of that is going to be 400 the status is going to be the 400 that's the thing so while doing this if there is any specific error is happening we need to raise that error and we need to handle it properly so inside this switch the first case which is going to be product dot create if the product dot created and that is one more case if the case the product dot updated either the product is created or the product dot updated i need to say await upset product record upset the product record event from the event i do have the data and i'm going to get that object as stripe which should be the product type. So product dot type, right? 
and I need to break this event. Right, then the next case is going to be case price dot created or case price dot updated. If any of these cases, this event is being fired up. So I need to call await upset price record and that should we need to get the data from the event and that should be as stripe dot price specific type then right at the end after this what i have to do is to case now we need to call for customer um, dot subscription dot created colon case customer dot subscription updated and case customer subscription deleted these are the events if any of these events it's been fired up then what i have to do i have to get that on subscription is equals to from the event dot data dot object object okay as stripe dot not string stripe dot subscription okay then i need to call await await come on await manage subscription status change call that function and you need to supply the subscription dot id subscription dot id as the first parameter then you need to supply the subscription dot customer customer as string type then you need to this is supposed to be yes yes then event dot type what type of event if that event type should be equals to customer dot created and then right right after here i need to break this event so break oops break right after here then what i need to do i need to call one more event so keep the case is equals to checkout session completed if the checkout session is successfully completed then i need to say cons checkout session which is equals to checkout session so const checkout session is equals to from the event dot data dot object as stripe stripe dot checkout dot session session stripe dot checkout dot session so right after here now what i need to do is if if that okay if that checkout session if that checkout checkout session dot mode if the checkout session dot mode is equals to subscription then open it on subscription subscription id we have to get that subscription id is equals to checkout session dot subscription okay then await manage subscription status change of subscription id as string then checkout session dot customer as string then i need to send the event as save the changes and i need to break this break this event save it and at last at the end i need to pass the default event default i'm just going to say throw new if that none of the event has occurred then default i'm just going to throw an error error i'm just going to say unhandled relevant event right say this changes oops this is supposed to be right up here my bad okay so this is the complete switch case that we are to do 
when you are if you are not sure so please go ahead and copy the switch case completely from here and then you have to replace it completely inside over here right so that's the thing then now we successfully created that part and if there is no errors at all this is the place and at the end what i have to do i have to return the next response next response dot json data and i'm going to say received as an object i'm going to say received or e c e i b e d received which is going to be true then i'm going to create the status status which is going to be the 200 save the changes so now all I have to do is to make sure that this API endpoint, which is working perfectly or not. So, so far, there is no mistakes over here, right? So then what I have to do is to let me get back over here, right? In this, and I need to create and uh, test our local environment. So let me copy this and let me go back over here and create a new, and I'm just going to say, um, copy Stripe login so press enter and make sure that you're logged in because these are the events that we need to follow up okay so it's waiting for the confirmation verify the pair import below the matches yes serene genius bravo Senec. yes allow access so now you can see the access is granted now. So I logged in successfully. So let me close that. So now you can see I logged in successfully. So if you don't have that Stripe login, so you have to go ahead and search for Stripe CLI, search for Stripe CLI and click that very first link. And you have to install your Stripe CLI. So if you're using a Mac, so better use the brew. If you're using Windows, please go ahead and use this uh download this okay you can either use um, where it is so you can follow the respective uh the platforms whatever the platforms that you are using mac for windows or whatever that you have you can see for windows you can see we have this one over here okay so Please go ahead and do the following respective chain uh, uh, respectively install the stripe cli and then hit this command stripe login and now you can see we have this event is completed over here now all i have to do is to copy this okay so we have to copy that so copy here and i have to paste it then over here all i have to do is to we have to change this local host our local host is going to be 3000 right so make sure it is up and running is 3000 then right after here it's need to get into our api folder so you need to supply your api so slash so let's get over here and let's say slash api slash webhooks because that is our folder name you can see webhooks right so let's now if you hit enter if you hit enter over here hit enter and that is going to get ready and this is our this is our webhook so let me get back over here and let me paste it over here so save this changes and you in order to run it perfectly you have to stop it and you have to rerun it right so now it is running up and running okay so now all i have to do is to copy this and i have to trigger that event in one more component so stripe trigger payment intent succeeded so we'll run it so it's showing trigger succeeded and if i get back over here you can see we are getting the details as 200 and 200 so if you get back over here and if you get to the events and you can see we have the successful the payment event which we triggered successfully over there to twenty dollars twenty dollars right so 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 far we just successfully finished that right so now all i have to do is to get over there and start creating the product right so which means the stripe is successfully working for me right now 
So don't uh, log in one more time because if you are logging one more time, the webhook secret which you are generated, which is going to be changed. So again, you have to copy and change that webhook secret over there. So uh, log in only one time and then check this try forward. This webhook needs to constantly run over here and this the payment intent is successfully gets uh, triggered and it's working perfectly. Now let's go ahead and start create the products in our uh, Stripe. All right then, so now what we have to do is to, let's get back over here and let's get to the uh, home or click this more options and go to the product catalog, right? And here we are going to create ourselves a new product. So let me add a new product. And the name of the product is going to be premium. Okay, description, listen to our ad free musics musics if you wish to upload any images and all those things and make sure please make sure that is it should be a recurring okay and i'm just going to say this is going to be 99 and it should be monthly and like it's better to keep it i'm just going to keep it 10 and i'm going to keep it as in usds in 10 dollars monthly and if i click add product and you can see we are they're getting that event this is working perfectly right so we are getting the events like the product is created and the price is created which means if you go and check your super base if you click this product table you should get the product premium listen to our ad free music there is no images and all those things and if you go to the prices table and you should get this message like here price id product id and active which is going to be boolean unit amount and what is the currency text and what is the type of the product and what is the plan uh, interval monthly and what is the count one time and that we don't have the trial periods and all those things which is right so so far what we have did is we successfully integrated the payment gateway and all these things are done perfectly by from the back end over here right so all we have to do is to do all this stuff to the front end so let's go ahead and start do it through the front end all right then so now what we have to do is to let's get back over here and inside this api so i have to create two more files right so i need to create a two more folder in it one which is going to be create checkout session so inside the api i'm going to create a new folder called create api checkout session inside here i'm going to say route.ts and i do have to create one more thing that is going to be one more file which is going to be create portal link to handle the user subscription details right so here i'm just going to say route.ts okay so inside this file so i'm just going to uh, in the route create portal link um, which is going to be so let's say create checkout session go here so you can copy this details which i given below which is basically over here see the checkout session where we are getting the details from the super base authenticated users and we are retrieving the details okay so over here i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to paste it inside here right which is going to be the same so i'm going to create whenever i'm calling this route or this you know this particular route which is going to be a post route and i'm going to create this create route handler client which is from our superbase auth helper next .js. and i'm going to get the authenticated user information then i'm going to retrieve the customer information then i'm going to get the sessions from the stripe and i'm going to identify what kind of payment method it is and what is the price and what is the quantity and what is the mode and allow the promotion codes or not and what is the subscription data once if it is success and i'm going to return the user to the specific account and i'm going to get that cancel url as well so this get url is basically coming from the function which we previously customizedly created right we can copy the details from here right save the changes and right after that i'm going to do the same thing for the create portal oops so basically i copied it in a wrong file so this is what happens when you are copying it please copy it properly this is for create checkout session paste it 
and now for create a route portal link I'm going to paste it over here All right this is for the portal link we are going to get that user information and retrieve the customer if there is no customer we are going to retrieve it and we are going to get that billing portal url from the stripe and i'm going to return that user to that specific billing portal url right so now we successfully created that next what we have to do is to we have to create the um the model hook for our subscribe model so i'm going to create a new file or I'm just going to copy and paste this auth model and I'm going to rename this as use subscribe model dot ts and then I'm just going to change this auth model to subscribe model right subscribe model just like that save the changes then what I have to do is to, I have to get back to our components folder. Inside our components folder, I'm gonna create a new file called subscribe model.tsx. Okay, so basically we are going to create ourselves a subscribe model. Okay, and let's make sure that subscribe model is just going to be the client side okay so here i'm just going to say sfc which is going to be subscribe model okay and inside here now what you have to do is to we have to get that model details and everything and we have to display it over here so let's go ahead and start doing that so here i'm just going to say model that model which is basically coming from dot slash model inside here and i'm going to say title title is just going to be uh, become a premium user then description which is going to be listen to music on Spotify premium Spotify premium then is open which is going to be initially it's true and on change for the time being i'm just going to pass this as an empty function save this changes and inside here i just need to say uh subscribe something like that save the changes right so now if i get back over here and if i refresh this i should get this because oh i forgot to add this inside the model provider where it is it is, should be in the model provider and i have to get that subscribe model save the changes and now we are getting the subscribe model over here right so now let's go ahead and start customizing the subscribe model one after another so now what we have to do is so let me get back to our uh, model provider okay so here now um mm, we have to create the content so let's get back to the subscribe model and let after here i'm just going to say let content is equals to i'm going to create a div inside here i'm just going to say uh currently so let's say no products available right and for this i'm just going to say class name which is going to be text center right so say this changes and that needs to be rendered over here content say this changes now we can see we are getting the messages uh, the content is not available right so what i need to do is to i need to fetch the uh, models from uh, i need to fetch the prices whatever the prices which is available i need to fetch that prices um so let's go ahead and do that Mm -mm -mm. one second so now what we have to do is to we have to fetch the products from our so in order to get that i'm going to get to our layout so let me close all these things let's keep it clean let me get to our app layout main layout over here where it is over here right so inside this app layout what we are going to do is to 
so we are going to get our active products right so over here so right after here i'm just going to say const products which is going to be um await okay so if i'm going to fix the await get the active products so we don't have this active product from so in order to make this to as an asynchronous function change this to async so now you don't get that error of course we are going to get this error because we don't have this so what i'm going to do get into the actions and i'm going to create a new file called ts okay so basically whatever we have inside the uh, get songs so i'm just going to copy everything from here copy and i'm going to put it into the get active songs okay and then i'm just going to change this name to get active products all right so now this promise is not going to be for the song this promise is going to be the product with price which is coming from our custom types right so from the super base we are going to create server side client cookies and everything we are getting the data super base but this time this we are not getting it from songs we are going to get it from products we're going to get, get it from the products and so let me copy and paste it over here this is how so from the products we are going to select everything and we are going to select the relational table information from the prices as well and i'm going to get only the active which is going to be true and the price not active which is going to be true and i'm going to arrange it in the order inside the metadata object i'm going to have the index and i'm going to order it based on the index right and i'm going to get the order as well okay and i'm going to arrange it by using the unit amount and i'm going to maintain it in the foreign table as the prices information right order it based on unit amount and the metadata index and the foreign table relationship which is going to be the prices and if there is any error we are going to return the error or if there is any data we are going to return it as any type or an empty array right so now we have that and i'm going to import it over here import it and i'm going to supply this model into my model provider so for this i'm going to create a new product which is going to be this product of course we will get this error over here because in the model provider we don't have anything as a props for the model provider so let's go ahead and create the model provider props first so right after here interface model provider props which is going to be products products and that is going to be the product with price array and i'm just going to say over here colon react dot fc which is going to be the model provider props and i'm going to extract the products from there now we don't get any errors over here and model providers will have the props over here now from here i need to pass this products products which is going to be the products right i'm just going to copy the same stuff from here and i'm going to get into our subscribe model and i'm going to paste it over here and i'm going to say copy and paste it over here and then i'm just going to import this okay okay now inside here now i need to supply this uh where it is i need to supply it over here react dot oops this is supposed to be capital letter react dot fc which is going to be subscribe model props and i'm going to get the props as products all right now the issue will be resolved over there and over here and everywhere the issue will be resolved right now inside this subscribe model now what i need to do is to we have this user subscribe model right so where it is let me open the use use subscribe model you can see we have this is open and on close and everything so i need to get that so in order to do that right after here i'm going to say const subscribe model which is going to be use subscribe model open it right and i need to get the user information so const is equals to use user at hooks user so from here i need to get the user then i need to get these loading state then i need to get the subscription information of that user as well as 
then I'm going to say use state snippet which is going to be price is loading okay and which is going to be a string type okay that's the state that we need to do and of course i need to get the on change event as well as because we need to make sure whether that function is opening and close that on change event and right after that then what i need to do is i need to um, bring that over here i need to map it over here on change then i need to get this is open subscribe model dot is open so for the time being let's keep it as empty later i will show you where i need to trigger that subscribe model and all those things now what i need to do is to inside this product i need to render the product if that is a product then i need to render something else so right after here or we can push this to the top over here and i'm going to say here if the products dot length if that is the product dot length that means we do have the products then i'm just going to say content which is equals to div open it and i'm going to say products dot map open and i'm going to say product get that every single product from that then i'm going to open a function inside here if if the product if the product dot prices dot length l e n length if that is the product dot prices dot length then written oops if not if not the product dot prices dot length then i'm just going to say written key is going to be product dot id as no prices available okay otherwise i'm gonna return product dot prices dot map open it and i'm going to get the single price from it then i'm going to render this component over here which is going to be a button component from the button then inside here i'm just going to say subscribe for i need to display the um <clears throat> i need to display the that uh, for the price informations over there right so in order to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create one more function right outside here so that function is going to be const format price which is going to be the price the type of the price which is going to be a callback function and const price string equals to new international intl international number format open it and en hyphen us comma open the object style which is going to be the c u r r currency c u r r e n c y currency then we need to get that currency and we need to supply the price dot currency we do have in it then we need to say minimum fraction digits which is going to be zero then and right after this is supposed to be const yes const const i const and right after here i just need to say format open it and i'm going to say price if the price dot unit amount is there if not we need to say zero if it is there then divided it by 100 right then i need to supply that i need to send that format price inside where i need to send that format price inside here subscribe for dollar and let's say format price of price okay and yay ten dollars and we need to supply the price dot interval over here right so um, 
I'm getting an error over here. Mm, 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 mm. Say this changes. Oh, it's just a type error. Say this changes. And now we are getting for undefined. We are getting the price as undefined. Oops, we haven't returned the return price string. Now you should get that price string over there. Subscribe for $10 a month, right? So now we are getting the interval count and we are getting the $10 count. So that's the price information that we are getting it from our uh, table. Now let me customize this class name, which is margin bottom, which is going to be four. Four, margin bottom four, right? Then uh, the key, which is going to be the price dot ID. Maybe in, if you are having more than one prices over there, we need to supply that properly. So on click, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a callback function which is going to be handle check out and i'm going to supply the price in that function of course we don't have that function yet and whenever this is disabled this needs to be disabled whenever is loading or if the price dot id is equals to price is loading right so let's go ahead and create this handle checkout function which we don't have it yet so let's go ahead and create that and right after here i'm just going to say const handle checkout which is going to be a callback function and that function of course it's going to be an asynchronous and inside this function i'm just going to supply the price which is going to be the type of the price so save these changes right now uh, what I need to do is whenever I click this function, I'm just going to say set price is loading. I'm just going to pass the price dot ID in it, right? If I don't have the user, if not user, then set price is loading as undefined. Then return toast dot error as must be logged in or must be authenticated double verifications right and if i have the subscription already then i just need to say set subscription set is price loading as undefined again and then i just need to say a written toast dot written toast i just need to say already subscribed right if not then only i just need to um, so right after here this is the place right this is the written statement so if i have the subscription object which means the user is already subscribed so content is equals to div and let's say already subscribe if and then i'm just going to say class name which is going to be text center right so if the user is already subscribed then here over here we are just going to send the messages already subscribed right so right after here now if the user is not subscribed yet then i just need to open the try and catch try and catch over here inside the catch block okay we just need to say get that console dot log that error and then i'm just going to say toast dot error error as error and i'm going to get that object dot message okay so this error will be assumed as this error object and we are going to get that message and we are going to send that message to our toast right and finally inside that finally i'm just going to say set price loading is undefined and inside this try block i'm just going to say const i'm not going to get the session id session id is equals to from where await 
post data we are going to call that post data from our libs libs foil folder and enter and okay inside here i need to supply so i need to supply the url which is going to be our api slash checkout session our hook api slash checkout slash session then i'm going to supply the data object which is going to be the price right it should be passed as the object please make sure it should be passed as the object because inside the uh, api checkout session routes you can see we are getting two um objects over here see we need to pass this data as the object right so that's the reason this is the checkout option which we created over there right right so once it's successfully done then what i have to do so right after here you have the session id then i need to get the stripe cost stripe is equals to await we need to get that stripe this is the place where we are really calling that get stripe method from the client side so get stripe which will gives you the stripe instance then stripe question mark dot redirect to checkout function and i'm going to pass that session id which we have already generated save this changes right so now if i and before doing that please make sure this it should be constantly running right and now if i click this that should load the user to our checkout session link over here right so here it's showing pay with card my email address it's already fetched over here right and I, all, all i have to do is to uh, use the dummy code informations and subscribe the informations all right so here let's use the dummy code information 42424242242 which is provided by and here i'm just sending 555 555 and i'm just going to use my name as a card name billing address and here uh let's use the address see pin number okay so i'm just going to hit this subscribe it's loading and everything it's showing here 200 200 200 look at that so we got ourselves a success message and it's passed to our uh, session account and of course we don't have that account so that's the reason it's been doing like that so later we will do create the account so which means so our subscriptions details it's already enrolled you can see that here it's showing us already subscribed right so because we already subscribed reason which means if you get back over here and if you get click the subscriptions informations and you should be able to see the user id and he's the active subscri subscriber and if you get to the products uh, customers and you should get that customer id over here which means the customer is already subscribed and you have your subscription id so that user is successfully subscribed and we are getting the messages already subscribed so previously it was displaying the button but right now it's showing the already subscribed so now all we have to do is to go ahead and uh, uh, fix this model because it's displaying every single time so we don't want to display that in order to do that i'm just going to say here subscribe model dot is open so now if i change this it will be displayed uh, remote now all i have to do is to go ahead and create the accounts page and i need to display this so if it is the user is already sub uh, subscribed i need to display that uh, that different option over there or i need to bring that uh, button to open the subscribe model so let's go ahead and do that now all right then so now what we have to do is to let's open up our main container and if you scroll all the way to the bottom and right after here you can see this is section is for the premium user so this division needs to be rendered only if that is a premium uh if you are not subscribed right so in the use user so i can get the subscription object get that subscription object and scroll all the way down 
and I need to get the subscribe model also. So right after here, so const subscribe model is equals to use subscribe model, get that information. And for this, whenever I'm clicking this on click, I'm just going to say subscribe, subscribe model dot on open, save it. Now, if I click this, that will bring the model and let me change this to cursor as a pointer. So now whenever I click this, that will bring, if the user is not subscribed, he can click it. So this needs to be displayed only if not subscription object is there. If not subscribed, then display this. Now it will not be displayed, right? And the logout button is supposed to do all the way to the top. So if the user is subscribed, subscribed, if there is a subscription, then I need to display the same thing, same division, just like the same one, but I don't need this. And I don't need this paragraph. Instead of this, I just need to say GI ground heart save these changes. That's how it looks. If the user is already subscribed, this is how it looks. So, and uh, you can see uh, right now, even if I click it, nothing is going to happen because the user is already subscribed. So we don't need to display that option, right? Cool. All right. So, mm, 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 mm. okay. Then what I have to do is, and this thing needs to be, Okay, that's fine so far. All right, so now let's go ahead and start creating the accounts page. That's what we need to do next. So before moving into the accounts page, what I have to do is to, I have to make sure that uh, the user who haven't subscribed yet, he can't able to listen the music over here. So what I need to do is I need to go use on play. And this is the place I'm going to get the subscription information. And I'm going to create one more hook. Let's say const is equals to subscribe model, which is equals to use subscribe subscribe model. And and what I need to do is over here. Wait a minute. Uh, right after here, if I don't have the subscription, if I don't have the subscription written subscribe model dot on open instance so say this changes and whenever uh, i think it is in the okay so we ran into some issues what is that okay so let's refresh this yeah there is no issue just refresh it because we are changing the use on play hook directly that's the reason so let's jump into our where i implemented the i think it is in the main container i think this is the place where i have the handle logout right so before refresh this i need to say player dot reset i need to reset the player as well whenever the user logged out so now if i click logged out now i'm successfully logged out and if i try to listen to this music and it's asked me to authenticate and if i authenticate myself with a different account so in order to do that what i'm going to do is um let me create a dummy email so dummy or temp mail temp mail so click this mm -mm -mm. So it's going to load the temp email. So let's wait. Okay, so let me copy this mail and let me get back over here and often first I need to create an account. Sign up. Paste it. And type the password. Click sign up. Okay, so check your email for confirmation link. We got the confirmation link and let me open it in a new tab so that is going to confirm it okay so the email address it's been successfully confirmed and you can see it's logged in okay 
so let me get back over here uh, okay here also it's logged in successfully okay so you can see that now if i click this you can't see become a premium user it's asking me to subscribe because i haven't subscribed this so that's the reason it's asking me to click and ask me to subscribe to become a premium user so now if i click here that is also going to work perfectly and if i click log out and if i log in with my own account sign in with github okay so now it's still loading loading okay now i have the details and you can see i already successfully logged in okay right and i can see and i already successfully subscribed so that's the reason i'm i'm not getting gopro option because i'm a subscribed user right so now even if i click this so that will start playing these songs and i can able to listen these songs directly right so that's the uh, that's that's what we are trying to do over here so now all we have to do is to go ahead and create the accounts page all right then so now let's get into the accounts page let's go here go to the app and i'm going to create a new file new folder okay so that thing needs to be uh the exact same where it is i'm gonna create a new folder account over here account and I'm just going to copy this error and loading stuff into it. This over here. And I need to bring the pages as well as. Anyways, I'm going to customize it. Don't worry. Pasted it. And I don't need this page content. And I don't need this page content over here. Right. So basically, this is going to be our account settings and header and i don't need this that's all i needed in the header to be so save it okay now i need to navigate the user to the accounts page so in order to do that i need to what happened uh oh wait a minute okay unfortunately i just hide it I thought I closed it. Okay. So now what I need to do is I'm going to create a new component, you know, get back to the main, main container. And where is my profile right over here? This is the place where I'm displaying my profile, right? So what I need to do is, um, mm, 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 mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. what we can do to to wait a minute let me open this spotify so and let me log in with my github account sign in okay so now if i click here so that is taking me to my uh, custom portal right so that's what we need to do because i was wondering where i need to add that option so now what we have to do is um this is the place where we are displaying that image right this is the image data that we are displaying so for both of these images for both of this what i'm going to do is on click i'm going to call an on click i'm going to call a callback function and i'm going to get the router instance and i'm going to say push the user to where to slash account so if there is a met, uh, photo URL, we, the user is going to display the photo or else we are going to display our custom avatar image over there, right? So now if I click this, that is going to push the user to the account page and we are getting the account settings over here, right? Cool. Now from here, uh, what I have to do, I have to get back over here to the account and inside here, I need to bring the account content which i haven't created it so let's go ahead and create that so 
we have to create the account content first so here inside the accounts i'm going to create the components folder and let me create a new file called accounts content.tsx and sfc account content and div i'm just going to display the account content and let's make sure this as the client side component save the changes and let's bring it to here import it save these changes and now you should get the account content over there now this account content let's go ahead and start customizing it so this account content is going to be class name with this of course is going to be full and px is going to be four and flex flex column flex column and item everything should be in the starting and justify everything should be in the starting positions and gap between each element is going to be four right that's how it looks and instead of this account content now i need to get the user subscription information so let's import the instances whatever the things we needed so router is equals to use router from react navigation then i need to get const subscribe model is equals to use subscribe model then uh, const is equals to use user at hooks user from the user i need to get the user state and i need to get the is loading state and i need to get the subscription informations right these are the things in the use effect hook inside here now if is not is loading if the user is not loading and as the same way and if i don't have the user instance as well as i need to say router dot replace the user to home route right this needs to be happen every time whenever this is loading or user or router instance is changing right so then right after that inside here first what i need to do is if the user it's not subscribed if that is no subscription then i need to say div class name which is going to be with the full with the full flex item center and justify everything at the end and here i just need to say paragraph no active plan and right after that i'm going to display the button for the user to subscribe so let's say subscribe and whenever the user clicks this button on click i'm going to call this subscribe model dot on open right so this is only the user is not subscribed if the user is subscribed the user is already subscribed then i need to display a div class name which is going to be with full and flex item center and justify everything in the end i'm sorry end then i just need to create a div with a class name flex item center justify center and gap is going to be div inside this div i'm going to create a paragraph tag with the class name of text neutral 300 and this is going to be you are currently on the inside here i'm going to make create a bold and here i'm just going to say subscription question mark dot prices question mark dot products question mark dot name save these changes and as well as right after that i'm gonna bring an icon which is going to be this icon the crowned heart right so save these changes so that is going to be display like this you are currently on the premium user right premium uh, membership membership okay because that's the premium is the name and the membership is just the uh because i forgot to write the name as the premium membership over there in the stripe okay now right after this section what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a div which is going to be class flex item center and justify everything in the starting position and gap everything is going to be three and inside get div class name 
width of course it's going to be 12 and minimum width of course it's going to be 12 height is also going to be 12 rounded it's going to be medium bg neutral it's going to be 400 and cursor of course it's going to be pointer flex item center justify everything in the center and the position is going to be the relative position and now inside here what i'm going to do is let's go to the main container just exactly the same way i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it in the here so let's okay i forgot to let's import this from next image okay cool fine so for this we don't need to put this because the user is already in the accounts page only save this changes now you should get that and this is not supposed to be rounded full it's going to be medium Say this changes just like that right right after this particular division right after this particular division i'm going to bring the user name just like this that is going to display the user name right after that then right after that i'm going to bring a button which is going to display the open custom portal to access the subscription details and this button is going to be disabled whenever the user uh, is loading or i'm going to create one more state which is going to be use state loading which is going to be initially false and here and that state also need to be included loading right after that then what i need to do is I'm going to say class name width of course it's going to be full width but from the medium device onwards width of course it's going to be 64 save the changes that's how it looks and for this I'm going to add an on click event and I'm going to say redirect to custom portal because that function we haven't created it yet so let's go ahead and create that custom portal function so right after here const custom redirect to custom portal function which is going to be an error function and that function needs to be an asynchronous and here set loading which is going to be true right and of course try and catch and finally i'm gonna say set loading as false and inside this catch, of course, I'm going to say toast dot error open it bracket error as error question mark dot message right inside the try const you are for object equals to await post data open it okay and get an object and from here I'm going to call the URL instance. And for this URL instance, I'm going to navigate the user to that custom portal link. And I'm going to get the URL from here and the error, if there is any error. So if you have the URL, so we need to assign the user to that specific URL, window.location to assign the user to that specific URL. So save these changes. Now, if I click this, user will be a redirect. Okay, so we are getting an internal server error. Let's check it out. In the object. Data is undefined. Okay, we are getting the data as undefined. So that's the reason it's not navigating. Let's go ahead and fix that. So let me get back to the API route here. Okay, so I'm not getting the user instance. So 
so everything it's perfect but we are getting an issue why so this is that error that we got okay so the error we are getting is you can't create a portal session in a test mode okay so what we need to do is we need to activate that portal link so you have to go to the um, stripe and home search for customer portal here inside the settings buildings customer portal click this and you have to activate this test link so click activate this test link okay now the test link is activated and now if you go ahead and click this that should take you to that okay there we go you can see you can change your or cancel your plan and your plan and the, this is the invoice history and your email address and you can customize your payment method over here which is completely maintained by the stripe itself right so we successfully uh, uh, finished and integration integrating the stripe payment gateway and now all we have to do is to go ahead and deploy this project and that's what we are going to do next all right so now in order to deploy it what i'm going to do is i'm going to open my github so here let me open my github okay so i'm going to create a new repository create a new repository and i'm just going to say youtube spotify clone version 2 uh this is the april right april 2024 and i'm going to keep this account as a private and i'm going to create this repository so create repository all right so now i have this and i'm going to go in here and before pushing into it so let's make sure my environment local file is being hidden because that's a place where i do have all my environment variables right all right node modules and environment variables are being hidden okay next everything has been hidden now so all right so now let's go here and let me say changes project completed commit okay and i need to add the remote let me get over here add remote and add remote from the github and this is the youtube spotify clone that's the one and i'm going to say youtube spotify clone april 2024 enter now the remote it's been successfully configured now all i have to do is to click here and pull or push to here so now everything has been deployed okay my complete project has been deployed over here now all i have to do is to get back to the vessel okay let me open the vessel and click here so that will take me to my dashboard in this case i already created account and i already created my organizations for myself okay so if you are using this for very first time you have to log in it by using your github so please go ahead and log in by use so in this case i'm just going to create add new project okay so we are going to import that project directly from my git so this is the git which i created just now so import it and the project name is going to be youtube spotify clone p2 right all right all right so then now what we need to do is get back to your environment variables so i'm going to copy my complete environment variables from here and i'm going to paste everything over here just like that right so later we need to change this to the stripe web folk secret needs to be changed all right so we need to change that so now i'm just going to hit the deploy and i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to get back to you because this will take quite some time to deploy your project completely so hit deploy all right so now after a few minutes my project is successfully deployed okay so this is the project which is successfully deployed over here so now all we have to do is to uh, continue to the dashboard okay this is the project and this is the link so or i can use the short link if i click this that is going to open our website and look at that 
we have the song and if I click the song that is asking me to log in and I'm going to sign in with GitHub. Okay, so now the user it's it's successfully authenticated and I'm already subscribed user. So that's the reason if I click this, that is going to be long and it's working perfectly. And if I click this accounts page and you can see it's the loading animation is smooth. And if I click this open custom portal and that is going to directly over here, right? Now, uh, we need to change this. We need to change this. Only one thing that we need to do is to over here. Currently, it's completely listening to our local listener. Okay. So if I go to the web folks and okay so currently this is listening to our local environment so we need to change this to our site environment so what i need to do is i have to uh, copy our site url this is the site url uh, we have to copy the site url from the dashboard so uh, let's copy this because we already where it is we are oh come on i think i opened it See, once I returned it, it's returning back to this local post, right? So to do that, uh, that's the reason. So what I need to do is, um, I need to copy this, click it, copy it from here. And let's get back to the stripe at the endpoint URL and select the events, select all the events and click add all the events and scroll all the way to down and click click add endpoints right so now you can see we are waiting for the event to be generated let's wait totally it's listening for 201 events right so it need to wait Okay, so in the meanwhile, while waiting, what I need to do is I need to reveal this secret key. So this is the secret key I need to update. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to get back to the uh, vessel and get back to the deployments. And where it is project, I think it should be in the deployments only. This is the deployment. Um, get to the project oh come on we need to edit the settings i think so yeah oh yeah go to the settings and in that settings you can see the environment variables and if you scroll all the way down you can see the stripe web hook and you can click this click here and click edit option and then change this web hook to this and save it and now it's saved and now all i have to do is to get back to my project deployment and click over here and redeploy so this might so don't enable this use existing build cat so ignore it and make sure that is unchecked and click redeploy so this might take a while so let's wait so still this event has been generating let me refresh it okay so this is also rerunning so let's wait for the deployment successfully completed okay so this events also still it's waiting this needs to be enabled and it's need to be active so we have to wait until this event successfully done All right then, so now we can see it's successfully deployed and as well as the same way, if you get back to the webhooks also, you can see it's currently listening to my local and as well as it's listening to the versal as well as. All right, so let's get back over here and we have to change one more thing. So what I have to do is um, I go here, project, and if I click this, and I have to update this link in my Superbase authentication as well as authentications 
URL configuration over here currently it is local host 3000 I have to change this to this and save this okay now it's successfully updated and refresh this okay so now if I click over here and if I wish to create my one more account um, let's go here and create one more temp mail I think it's going to give me a same email address let's wait yep it's giving the same email address let's change the email address right now okay i think it's giving the same so let me check out okay so let me use my custom email over here so use this or code with with three yes this email address and let's say admin at one two three okay oops it should be sign up yep now sign up yep check your email so let me get back to my gmail and let me change my account okay i think i closed that account so code with, with three so let me pause it all right then so now you can see we have this no reply option so click over here and i can get this confirm email address let me open this and look at that now we are successfully confirmed and it will it is returned back to this youtube spotify clone v2 okay and if i click over here it's asking me to subscribe now and if i click subscribe so that will takes me to the stripe okay so it's listening to the stripe portal the reason is because currently it's listening to that specific this specific event over here okay which is active okay and now i can able to give the dummy details like four two four two four two four two four two and give five 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 I can choose my name and I can give the address details city pin number and these details city pin number needs to be valid then only it's working because I tried dummy it's not working so if I click subscribe it's processing yep now the user is successfully subscribed and he is authenticated back over here right okay so i was navigated to the different url this is the another url which is provided by the vessel itself so if i search for youtube and if i click here and you can see we are successfully authenticated so the vessel provided you two different urls over here, this one and this one so i was navigated written back over here authenticated by the vessel right but it will work perfectly fine so we are successfully finished the project and the user is successfully authenticated he can able to manage the portal and everything and at the end he can able to listen to our songs as well as okay but the, uh, if the network is slow but the song will take some time to load the songs and everything all right so now we successfully finished and completed this project so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this session throughout this project series. So if you have any questions or anything, please drop the link in the description below. And if you need this project, click the link in the description below and you can get this project for yourself. All right. So I'll see you on in the next project.